So this is the story of a young boy called Tommy. It all began in a quiet city called Orville's Hill. He and his mom, Candace, lived alone in an old house near the forest. Tommy's dad died when Tommy was six years old. He was diagnosed with diarrhea after he ate some weird mushrooms from the forest near the house. His diarrhea was so strong that he landed in the hospital. He was there for a couple of days until suddenly, he died in the night. Later in the morning, a nurse discovered that something was wrong with his legs and arms. They were unnaturally long, like they grow in the night just before the patient dies. The case was so weird that the hospital staff quickly removed the body of the patient because they didn't want it to spread to the other patients. And the body stinks very much because he made a lot of poop on the diaper in the night. The hospital staff told the wife of the husband, Candace, that her father died of diarrhea, and they don't know what led to his death. So they go back to the house and time passes by. When Tommy was 10 years old, he found himself with a new hobby. He started to go to the nearest forest to collect items for his base. He grabs everything, pines, rocks, trees, animals, and mushrooms. Firstly, he used them as decorations in his base, but later when he was hungry and his mom didn't cook dinner because she was busy watching TikTok, he ate the mushrooms out of hunger, and this is when it all started. In the night, Candace went to his room to check on him because he hadn't eaten the evening meal, but the doors were locked. Tommy never locks himself in the room before, so Candace says, open the door or I will cut your internet, but the doors don't open. So she kicks them with full force, but still they don't move. Candace didn't know what else she could do, so she went watching TikToks again, and she decided that she would check on her son in the morning. In the morning, actually in the afternoon, because Candace usually wakes up at 2 p.m., she knocks again, and this time the door opens. Her son was sleeping, which is unusual because it was 2 p.m. She tried to wake him, but he was very sleepy. She smacked him on the cheek, and she discovered that her hand was dirty. Some weird, green, sticky, and glowing substance was on her hand. She smelled it, and it smelled like rotten excrement. She uncovers the bedsheet, and she discovers that Tommy has dirty feet and hands, like he was running barefoot on the outside. Furthermore, she checked the window, and it was half open. Tommy has a room on the second floor, so there is no way he could jump. It was too high for a normal human to jump and not break a leg or two. She closed the window and got out of her son's room. She went to the garden to further investigate this mystery, and under his son's window, she saw footsteps in the mud. She knew that it was her child's feet. In the evening, Tommy finally woke up, but he did not want to speak about yesterday. He actually didn't speak at all. He wasn't hungry and didn't want to eat anything. Not only that, but he acted very weird, and Candace didn't want to take him to the hospital knowing what happened to her husband. She was afraid of doctors. She remembers that the doctors and nurses acted weird and did not want her to see her husband's body. At night, Candace wanted to check on her son again, but she forgot because she was watching her favorite TV serial on Netflix. When she finally woke up the next day, she ran to Tommy's room. The doors were wide open. She entered the room, and what she saw was the scariest thing she had ever seen in her life. Tommy has marks of blood on his face and on his hands. Not only that, but something changed. His legs and arms seem longer than usual. She checked the date on the phone and it turns out that Tommy was 10 years old, but now he looks like 15. The window was opened again. She closed it and ran to the garden. In the garden, she followed the footsteps, which led to the garden toilet. She opened the door and immediately smelled it. It was the worst smell she had ever smelled in her lifetime. It was even worse than her farts when she ate ice cream with garlic flavor. She hovers over the toilet and she sees a poop. Yes, a poop, but it was not normal poop. She toughed it out with her bare hands and she discovered that there were a lot of feathers in it. She knew what had happened. Candace ran out of the toilet and went straight to a little barn they had next to the house. The barn was a bloodbath. All her chickens were dead. Some of them had their heads cut off. Some of them were completely dismembered. And some of them were so thin it was like someone sucked blood out of them. This someone was her son. Candace knew what to do. She needed to lock his son in the house so he could no longer kill any animals. She went back to the house and tried to speak with Tommy, but he was sleeping. It was like he was only awake at night and wanted to sleep during the day. She tried to wake him up, but with no results. She grabbed some wood from the barn and locked the window. Then she installed the lock on the door and went to clean up the mess in the barn. After she finished, it was midnight. Then, out of nowhere, Tommy suddenly woke up. She heard him try to unlock the window. He was hungry. Then she heard the sound like he was trying to bite the wood. After it, there was silence but just for a few minutes. Next, he was trying to get out of the room by kicking the doors. She hears screams like she never heard them from her son. 
Even when she tried to feed him spinach, he wasn't screaming as much as now. It lasted for a few hours and stopped at 6 a.m., just before the sunrise. Then Candace went again to the first floor and unlocked the door. She saw her son sleeping. It was a good sign. From now on, she knew that she needed to lock him up every night. Tommy slept for the whole day until midnight again. Candace knew there was no way her boy could get out of his room, so she wore her son's gaming headphones to not hear him, turned on some disco music and went to sleep. But Tommy was very hungry and desperate. He needed to eat raw meat and drink fresh blood, so the whole night he hit the wood on the window. After a few hours, he finally cracked it and escaped. He ran on four legs like a wolf to the barn but couldn't find any chickens. He wandered into the forest to hunt for food but with no results until he found a house. He knew that house. It was the house of his friend from school. Tommy never liked him because he bullied him. He crawled to the house from the forest side and looked through the windows. They were dark and everybody slept. So he found a small rock and threw it at the window on the second floor. Nothing happened, so he threw again. And then the window opened. A little fat face appeared in the corner. It was him. Tommy quickly crawled on the wall to the window. And just before the kid tried to close the window, Tommy placed one of his long arms in it, blocking it. The fat kid curled up in a ball in the middle of the room because he was scared for death. Then Tommy quickly grabbed it with his long arms, opened a mouth, and from his mouth came a long black tentacle. It stings the kid in the neck, and Tommy started sucking the blood from him. The kid was huge, so Tommy was full just after a minute. There was plenty of blood still inside the body, so Tommy decided to take the body with him. He pushed it through the window with a struggle, and after it hit the ground, he dragged it to the forest. Later, he hid the body in a pit deep in the woods and went back home. In the morning, Candace went to buy some live chickens for Tommy. She thinks that the only way to keep the son in the home is to feed him live animals she could buy. She drove to the livestock shop and bought a few chickens and a little pig. Suddenly, the shop owner asked her if she had heard what happened to little Bob. He told her that someone had abducted her last night, the son of Robinson's. And now police are searching the forest because they saw evidence that someone took him there. She was shocked. She just remembers that she forgot to check the door and the window in the morning for her son's room. She quickly paid for the animals and left the store. In the house, she witnesses what she was most scared of. The wood on the window was broken and Tommy was all stained with blood. She took Tommy's sleeping body and placed him in the basement. Then she locked it with a lock and just a second later she heard knocking at the door. She ran to the door to open it and she knew she will see an officer but she was wrong. It was just Ben's mother. She told her that her son was missing and asked Candace if her son might know where her son was because they were friends. The truth is, they were not fiends, they were enemies. And Candace knew it because she got a lot of calls from the school saying that Ben and Tommy were fighting. She told her that she had no idea and Tommy is sleeping now. And then she closed the door. After that, she went to clean the broken window and just after she finished, Ben's mother came with the police. They wanted to speak with Tommy so Candace went with them to his room. And when she opened the door, she acted like she was shocked that her son was not in the room. It worked. After they saw the blood in Tommy's room, they searched the house in the basement. But they didn't know about the hidden small room in the basement that Tommy's father built 20 years ago. It was created to store pickles. But now its purpose was to hide the sleeping Tommy from the police. Before the police came, Candace moved a large wardrobe to the door of the hidden room. And it was unnoticeable. They left. But Ben's mother was very suspicious and pressed the police to question Candace more. But they didn't because Candace was attending an acting class 30 years ago in middle school, and she knew how to make fake tears. After a week, they found Ben's body in the forest, but could not get any new clues about what or who might have killed him. Candace still acted like her son was missing, and she hides him all the time in the basement. She fed him raw chickens and the blood from the growing pig, but Tommy was saying he wanted to go hunting and animal blood does not taste as good as human blood. But Candace did not let him out for weeks. After Tommy ate all the chickens and the pig was so thin that it died, Candace was not able to provide more food for her son. She couldn't go buy more livestock because people would get suspicious about why she was buying new animals every week. She wanted to save her only son, so she made the decision that she would feed him with her own blood. She takes it out with a syringe every night, and it worked for some time until Candace was so thin that one day she didn't have enough power to get up from bed. The next day, she crawled to the basement and Tommy was very angry. He and his mother had an affair, and eventually he escaped. But he returned the same night to the house with blood on his clothes. 
Later, Candace heard from the town folks that another kid from the neighborhood was missing. From now on, Candace was forced to open the basement once a month because Tommy needed to eat. A few months later, they abandoned their house and moved to a new house in another city because Tommy ate all the kids in the neighborhood and there was not enough meat for him. Nobody knows where they are now.